What is up guys, Johnny here. In today's video, we look at the brand new map from Madfinger Games upcoming game, Shadowgun War Games. Today we'll look at the symmetric map and some of the important areas, including the spawn areas, the main area where you can capture and return the flags, the elevated storage and ventilation areas, the strategic drop and fall points, the middle area, the east and west heavens, and the very interesting strategic points, the nest and the lookout. So let's start with the spawn areas. You start the game into the elevated spawn area and you drop into your main area. You can also split your team and drop into the left elevated area. It seems like you can stay inside your spawn and you might be protected by the blue wall or the red wall. But once you exit, you cannot go back until you die. There's a respawn timer, so you have to wait. The longer the game, the longer the respawns. Once you respawn, you can go back into the main area and join the fight. So once you exit your spawn, you drop right into your main area. This is where your flag is. You have to protect your flag and you have to go all the way to the other end to capture the enemy flag and return it to your main area. To capture the flag, it seems like you have to stand on it for a couple of seconds and then you can run away with it. The light blue areas on the map are the most elevated areas. The drop and fall points are very popular to defend the flag, but also to attack the enemy flag. HP, they actually didn't even see the, the rocket come in from the side, and he's gonna be able to pick up the flag here. Miska, LeCarte's got the pick up, he's got a little bit of heels in that position too, but he moves off of it far too soon. First point of the opening map of this series, and it's gonna come in nice and easily, there we go. Next, we have the middle area. This is where the box is, and we've seen some huge fights in the middle. Keep them in the fight for longer. Big breakout at mid here to start as the two teams are going to have lots of trades to try and take control. Oh, we are going to have a little bit of some nade action going out into the middle here to start things off. Then you have the east and west heavens. You can use the jump pads to jump from one to the other. So it's a fast way to travel from one side to the other. On the rest side it will be ESA and... Dalukar to start things off oh, double kill, oh, 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 oh. diving onto an opponent there. Finally, you have the lookout and the nest. These are the sniper spots. Most of the time, the snipers go straight there from the spawn. It is an elevated area, so from there you have a great view. You can snipe the middle, you can snipe the heavens, and you can snipe the opposing enemy lookout. They are in sniper range from each other. That Ikenik trying to go for some shots. we pushing ahead. That's Team Nitro once again. It's finding these kills early on. No zombie apocalypse for him, oh, nice and shot. that was a great shot. Hey, moving, there you go, gets the shot, Bail just because actually changed. Well, 15 minutes as well, it's like the longest map we have had. Visco, oh, oh man. That gives you a pretty good idea what the map looks like. It is perfectly symmetric, which is very important for esports. It is very well designed for the game mode capture the flag. So winning will be all about strategy, planning, and communication. You won't be able to just run around and kill the enemies. You will have to work as a team. What we've seen so far looks very promising. I cannot wait to see more. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like if you did. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more Shadowgun War Games news. Until then, turn on your notifications, watch my other videos. I'll be back soon. Uh, it's definitely been the case that Ikenik has kind of taken control as the number one player uh, on, on the glass cannon roll. And we've seen him uh, really show up with a stride, improving his own game throughout the course of today's event. So big props to him for that. And we're going to see if that trend can continue forward as Visca's pretty much switched off of playing aggressive or playing passively entirely he's just grouped up with the rest of the team for the most part now the card's getting a first blood for this round as he strikes it and now though we are seeing both teams try to push with an away squad to steal the flag the problem though is there's pretty much no defense set up at all here for the guys Marcel, on they're PSA. so low Strum and Marcel so low in HP and the cart wasn't able to finish them off they're gonna be able to heal back up to 40 get across the midfield the flag has not been picked up for ESA I wonder if they have anyone there left to do it Yes, he's trying to do something about they're trying to hold back. He could potentially pull this one off, and he does get the return himself. A nice little blink through there. And they are going to be able to hold on longer. Their opponent's flag also gets sent back to base in the process, though, so no successful cap attempt run out by the guys on ESA just yet to get that second point up on the board. It's going to turn into a very passive few seconds here. Row inside, probably not looking the right way for this fight here right now, but Dalukar does pick one off with his rockets. Tending to limit out the numbers here a little bit for ESA. Oh, strafe action, the cart there. Really hard to be hit. Visca, unfortunately, unable to do just that. Lapido able to get a big kill on a Dalakar. They are going to have a decent man advantage now. It's only one, but they have a positional advantage. Ruinside trying to push up the side again. The flag will be picked up in just a few seconds. This will be ESA again with the flag in their hands. We saw Marcel try to go in the last second to try to steal it away. They're just going to make sure he's dead by walking all over his dead body. 
<laughs> going back to look to help assist this flag from traversing across this map. Fortunately, just a kind of rogue attempt to steal the flag away coming out from ESA there. Makes it a pretty good distance considering it was only one lone player that manages to try and steal it, but it's not going to be too successful in the long run. They were just a little bit too far off from being able to link up with the carry and take him the rest of the way. So he does go down, but now two more kills found all of a sudden here. Look at the spawn timers. They're getting to a dangerous point. If Lapidlo can get himself into the site and knock out Marceau, is currently the only one inside defending it. Sturmwaffle's not too much of a trouble to deal with here. Does find himself a pickup versus Zyktik, so that has knocked out the glass cannon temporarily for ESA. But once again, it's the site that's really opened up right now. Lacart takes possession. Lapidlo was brought down very low. The good news is, though, is that Lacart is playing, I believe, on the support, so yep. he'll have the opportunity to try and heal himself as soon as that this, comes off cooldown. He needs this frag against Stromwaffle, who's going to try to go in for the flag. He's got the HP advantage. He's trying to heal up as well before he goes in there. Very smart use of that one, realizing that the respawn's going to be there. Ikidik's going to be respawning back in to potentially stop Stromwaffle from taking this flag away. And he hits the shot! And now Lakar going to be coming in. Is there anyone else to actually pick this one up? Is there anyone here to shoot him, or is he going to have a clean cap? Oviska is going to challenge. I don't know if we even saw Ikidik note it, but it doesn't matter. That player ends up going down, and we do see our red team. Once again, that's ESA picking up this round. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Potentially that final round kicking off. Ikidik, again, could be the man that I'm looking forward to see what he can do on that sniper rifle another time. He's been able to shut down so many individual players on the other team. Miska's not had a chance to really go up against him at all. See the push already coming in from the side, and Garenek able to get the first frag. They're all grouped up. It's so dangerous to go in this position, which means, where is Lep uh, Lepidlo? Is he actually going for the flag cap? Is he around the back side? You actually see him go right behind him. The Hunter Mines come in. They're all grouped up. The damage is going to be done. Strom off for the fall. They're being knocked down as well. They can't move. They have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, except to their deaths. Luckily for them, though, there's no real chance for a flat cap to come through, but that's just got to be really disheartening. Massive life off the board. It's going to give so much room as well for the players on ESA just to push up the field. If they can wipe them off one or two more times, and they've got themselves a very fighting chance to get a clean cap oh out of this one. Gosh. Oh, Dalukar the, again, though, the player to turn things around. At least it would seem to be the case. But it's Gary Neck and the cart that are now going to dive on top of the flag. They spot Marcel in the corner, try their best to overwhelm him. They don't have a lot of health for this fight, but they do get themselves onto the cap. They've got the shield to assist them in this situation, too. Tietzi's going to come and oh, run no. over one of the players from the blue side. Tietzi will get picked off in the process, but Gary gets himself away. Stromoff was, Stromoff was, was on the hot on, yeah, on the hot pursuit, though, so he's not going to be able to get away with that flag. Gary Net goes down. Once again, you cannot outrun the runner. And in that 1v1, once again, Sturmoffel will have to save the day for Nitro. It's getting really tense here. About to hit that 10-minute mark in this map, and that actually could have been the whole deal. Another kill comes through. Visco's got to be very frustrated. Ikenix had his number this entire series. It's a great grenade coming through to Marcel, though, taking the sniper out of the fight. TNC trying to push through, and they're still able to net themselves more kills. But as the respawn timer gets longer and longer, if TNC can sneak in, we could be looking at ESA for that last chance, that last run across the field. Sturmwaffle, along with Raywindside, still trying to spam in for a little bit of damage themselves. Raywindside. Looks like he's got an easy kill, it seems, but unfortunately he's not able to find it just yet. Delacard in the meanwhile pick up some kills, but Raywind side, walking right in, gets himself an easy cap, an easy steal. Can he get away with it though? That's the question. He is playing on the tanks, so he's got the most health, but no, it's completely overwhelmed by players from ESA, so it is not gonna happen. He is not going to be able to escape his fate there. See, still see the Hunter Mine tracking a player there. Just never gives up. Looking for more kills. Visca now, you can see, not even trying to challenge anymore. Up against Ikenik. Pretty much giving up on that one outright. They're just giving him so much freedom, so much vision around the map. You see Visca right there with potential shot off if Ikenik's able to hit it. And he does take down Jarenik now, looking to push up. These shots are really hard to hit, to be fair. Actually, in the lack of and being able to actually find those shots is going to come back to haunt him pretty heavily because look at these respawn timers now. It is not looking good for ESA. It's a good thing that Ikenik did stay back on his own. That's with the respawn starting to come out. They're at least going to have a fighting chance to stay in a good position defensively here. It's not actually looking like we uh, saw much of an attempt from Nitro to actually move in and steal this flag at all. Visca is still just sitting back. Oh, no. The oh, timer. no, the sentry turret. Oh, no. He's trying to run behind it. He's trying to dodge. He's going to be shot in the backside, and that will be him finished up. That's so unfortunate. If that was anyone else, he could have been sneaky about that one. Nate immediately denies that player, too, as he tries to move in. So bye-bye to Visca for now. Tietzi's made himself a forward push, too. He's got a great opportunity to try and dive in. Got a few more players. Spawning one on the ramp. Well, it's going to take a little bit of assistance from Lapidlo there to be able to pick it up. But at the end of the day, here's oh, the pickup now from ESA. They've taken it away. Now can they get the cap? 
There's the defense. Actually, it's going to be Lapido to try to stop them the best he can. Honey Mines, anything thrown out. He does get the kill. That is going to be, though, at least for now. Nitro pick up the flag themselves. Marcel, what direction is he going to go? Are they, is he going to meet Lacar? No, he's going to go through the middle. And is not going to be on the hunt. Actually, they might meet each other. Lacart from behind. Marcel could be huge. He could be the playmaker. Or it could be the downfall here of Nitro. He's trying to run away. He's trying to stay alive. It's going to be him up against the flag here. They get the return. Is he going to go for the score? Is this going to be it? Is ESA going to take this one home? Lacart making the run in. There's no one else to cap it as far as we can see. Has the support of the shield now. No one's on that flag. It's in, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, ESA are your champions here.